morning, good morning, good afternoon, cloud community, and welcome back to the Second City. We're here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, CNCF's largest North American event. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by my co-host, John Furrier, as well as our fabulous analysts for the show today. We've got Dustin and Rob. This is all about the analyst angle on the day. What was the hallway track? What were the keynotes looking like? What are the key trends for the show? I'm so excited. Before I turn it over to them, though, this is our last segment of the day. John, how are you feeling day one? Great, kicking my second Super. win. Boom, ready Getting to go. that second win, that Daffa comment did we it got, We did. got the swag segment, we got the show floor crawl's going to happen now, that's when everyone comes in. Is that where your energy's coming from? <laughs> well, I just, I just you see people coming in, the, the, the pace is getting, the energy's coming in, and uh, great, great lineup of, of guests today, tomorrow, and the next day. Um, just awesome guests, and again, innovation. This year feels different. Feels it like a, feel different. a tailwind, even though there's a headwind on the economy and the Israeli situation, um, and Israel on the war going on there, it's just horrible disruption, but tailwind on the trends. Yeah, absolutely. Dustin, you've had your finger on the pulse the whole day. Yep. Talk to us, what are some of your observations? You know, I spent most of my day with security folks. You know, yeah. A couple of uh, CISOs, uh, Chief Information Security Officers, a handful of developers, uh, working with you know, major Kubernetes production uh, environments, and, and security is top of mind every single place uh, you know, that, that I'm going. Um, you know, it's all about uh, reducing CVEs, ensuring that you're running secure configurations, um, and monitoring, 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 knowing what's going on inside and outside of your network. What seems to be the biggest challenge within that community? What's the solutions they're looking for here? Yeah, you know, with with the with the amount that Kubernetes has been adopted, you know, it really then the next step is now what, right? You know, what sort of applications are running inside of it and then having the introspection into those applications, you know, are they in a, in a, in a secure configuration? Is there some changes that need to be made in order to secure that? Um, so, you know, I've seen a number of challenges in that, uh, in that regard and been talking to a lot of people yeah. about it. Yeah, definitely. Rob, I know we had a great conversation with Emily Fox earlier, our security unicorn. Give me your hot take. Yeah, I, I think security is, you know, as Dustin said, it's one of the, it's, it's not the final frontier, it's an ongoing frontier yeah. that's going to have to be dealt with and as new things are brought in, and even one of the things, and we talked with Emily about it a bit, was that even things like how do you get to better productivity for developers, well you have backstage, well Red Hat, I didn't even know this, that Red Hat came on and was talking about the fact that they're actually doing security testing of the plugins into Backstage. It never even crossed my mind that you could theoretically inject code into Backstage without people knowing if somebody went and picked up you know, a plugin and brought it in. That, that just had not even crossed my mind. So I, I think, again, the hot take from it is there's a lot of open source and there's a lot of open vectors for security that need to really be plugged. Guys, I want to get into the, uh, the market analysis here. So let's break this down into the market that's happening. What does this market look like? What are some of the business challenges, the business models, secret sauce and technology, and then what the customer adoption is? So we'll start the market. What is this market? Mm. I mean, if Kubernetes goes away in the background, so to speak, not goes away, but like becomes boring, platform engineering steps up. Is this a platform engineering market or is this a cloud native workload market, Rob, Dustin, how do you see this? Because you got to shape the markets, I mean. I see them as a little bit separate. There is an infrastructure market, and I think Kubernetes is clearly in the infrastructure uh, market. By the way, I've said Kubernetes, I don't know, three times now, um, but I also talked to a number of different uh, organizations today about other forms of running containers in production. So this is very much the cloud native, uh, cloud native conference, you know. Still, all of that though, that's the market that is the infrastructure market. The application market that sits on top of it is a separate market. It's a separate line item, it's a separate spend on, you know, a, a given IT organization. Uh, you kind of need both and you'll source, what I'm saying is you certainly source that cloud native piece, usually from a cloud provider or some sort of on-prem. So this is more of an infrastructure market here? Yes, for? an infrastructure market without a doubt. Uh, but then there is a, there is a booming set of applications that now sit on top of a Kubernetes that get deployed as dozens, if not hundreds of containers together, you know, yeah. one in production, one in development, one in Europe, one in the US, uh, one on a battleship, one, you know, uh, back, back home at base. There, that's a separate market. Rob, what do you, we talk about data engineering being one of those maybe subsets. What is this market in your Do you agree with Dustin? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it, it Kubernetes, 
seems to have won, right? I, I think from that infrastructure layer, I think where there's still, this is cloud native, and I think it's those pieces on top that make Kubernetes work. You know, you look at things like mesh, service mesh, and things of that nature, which we haven't talked about yet today. And actually, there's competing, I guess you could say projects in that space. There's competing projects in the data mesh space. There's competing projects in all of these different spaces and I think that we're starting to see some winners per, you know, come out and I think there's still some winners to be declared. But Kubernetes is, I think, one, I think it's how do you make Kubernetes enterprise has been another theme that we've been hearing today which make it enterprise and make it easy. It's interesting because like cloud, now I asked the question because it's a good question, what is this, right? So it spans multiple things. We talk about developers, low code, no code, Gen AI yeah. comes in, app developers are doing their thing, platform engineers enabling a platform so that they could enable them to be more productive. That's an app market, then you got the platform engineering, which is like the new IT, yep. then you got yeah, the open I source. Is, <laughs> I think this has created a market. You know, if you walk the show floor here. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 keep going. Yeah, I'm no, you, you walked the, yeah, yeah. I can tell you walked the floor based yeah. on the swag segment that, yeah. uh, that we just had. Uh, you've seen a number of these startup, mid-sized growth companies, uh, even into you know, some of the large public companies. There are multiple markets that have been created by putting the hard work of data centers and infrastructure aside, that being a solved problem for you know, a number of incumbent winners on the cloud hosting. Now there's this explosion of applications that can just run when you can take for granted infinitely scalable storage, scalable networking, scalable you know, compute. We haven't even said AI yet, but you know, the special <laughs> processors and, and yeah. so Whoa, which is a huge part. There you go. All right, no. so wow, this is our generational shift, uh, Savannah, we've been talking about. This is a new model emerging on top of an already evolving mainstream open source market. Dustin, again, this is, yeah. comes back to open source full circle. Uh, no, it totally does, and I mean, we, we talk a lot, I mean, we're, we're Silicon Valley brats, and we talk a lot about the funding ecosystem right now, and or I'll speak for myself. He's from Boston, Austin. And, and, uh, <laughs> but, but you and I in particular, uh, uh, I mean, we live there now, and point being, we talk a lot about the funding ecosystem drying up. You've got companies here raising large rounds, large up rounds, which I think says a lot. I mean, Chronosphere closing their series, C, $115 million. This is serious capital going into exactly what you're talking yep. about there. I think that's a super compelling point. Yeah, I'm Business glad, models, okay, let's start. I was just going to say, I'm glad you came back to the, the venture capital and the investment angle. There are some investors that like to invest in a established market, and there are others who love to go and carve out their space in a, in a market that's just being created. Uh, and I think you're getting you know, quite a bit of, we've seen that evolution, you're getting quite a bit of that here. I'm sorry, John, go ahead. Well, this comes back to the business model of this market. It's, it's a new market, it's kind of evolving, it's moving uh, fast, AI is going to make it, give, I think it will give it some shape. Um, data engineering is one. What's the technology business model angle? We heard a lot about uh, the HashiCorp's move. We talked about that last time, uh, Dustin, on theCUBE. Uh, we talked about the success of Mongo in the past with a similar approach. Open source is still open source. How are these companies going to make money? You have a melting pot of diversity of input. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think a lot of it, and having been in the open source world, and I know you've been there as well, I think when you start to look at it, the business model, the open source needs to be good enough that you have a community. I think community is the key around it of either users and or developers who are contributing back into it. And then I think it goes beyond that that you build your value, that's your business model on top of that, so that you actually can you know, proceed to make money and be a, an operating viable company. I had this discussion with Tristan, who's the CEO of DVT Labs, last week on how he's very firmly saying, hey, we're staying Apache, and I'm, we're a commercial company selling DVT Cloud. And it was really interesting, wrote it up last night, yeah. and I, I think part of how you look at it is, they're talking about how they're standing on the shoulders of others who've come before them, not necessarily Hashi, who decided they're not, a, in, actually, I give their CEO credit, he said multiple times they are not an open source company anymore. You know, they're not, and I, I think that, to his credit, he understands how the company's evolved once it became a yeah. public company. And at least you're communicating clearly and not trying to be something you're not. If there's anything an open source community doesn't like is when you pretend to placate them. Guys, one of the things that come up with American Airlines, one of the other end user customers on theCUBE today, just now, 
the complexity, guys, is a huge problem. So if this transformation of modernization of IT, whatever you call it, platform engineering, this new market's evolving, these are large, complex infrastructures that are going to be enabling kind of almost an abstraction behind the curtain, under the hood, things like that we talk about. If it's going to be a transformation of this kind of complexity, there's got to be some tech under the hood, yeah. and then what does the apps look like on top? This is a big problem, complex systems. But I think that's where, that's where the business models come in. And I think that's where people are going to make their money is how do you make something that's super complex or very dev, I need a dev to, get to, my, to make my devs productive. Like if I need devs to work on you know, backstage and I, I have to like have a team of devs for backstage, that's, how, how, what's the ROI on backstage? Yeah. And I think that's why they're in their community and Spotify and others, Red Hat, VMware, Cisco, are all contributing in there to make it easier going from 70 steps to install to three. Right, so this is where I think I'll credit the Linux Foundation, Cloud Native Foundation, and so forth. Uh, you mentioned you know, investing your devs into backstage, which is a, a product, it's very much a, a, a product. Um, and a good product. It's, it's, I've heard a lot about it here just today. Um, there's another piece though, which is you know, this incredible set of projects that are part of the Linux Foundation and under the cloud native umbrella. Uh, and I think largely what I've seen is people feeling like they can get invested in their own skill set with projects that are part of that you know, open source foundation uh, with a little bit of insulation away from what might happen if someone takes one of those commercial products and our open source products and changes the rules, changes the license. And so, you know, that, that's I think a really important um, role that the foundations play here. Totally agree. So I want to ask you guys all one question for all of us to talk about um, is, when you have these market shifts, the old way makes way for the new way. So old way was that way, and now the new way is the new thing. What is the old and new? As we look at this market here, we look at swag, we just talked about swag and other things, how people go to market, the team formations, how they're funded, AI's right here coming with a tailwind. The economy will kick up. What's new, what goes away? And what of the old way stays in, into the future? Whether that's data, we talked about data being valuable, data exhaust turns into with generative AI, more value. So what's, the, what's, what's going to change if generative AI comes in, accelerates platform engineering, which accelerates white spaces that get filled in with, with glue layer or products, new models emerge, what goes away and what stays? I think, I'm happy to go first, okay. since we're okay, here. Good. So one of the things that I think we'll see maintain a theme throughout all of this is community. We talked about it with Emily, when, you know, the biggest thing that all of these companies and, and projects here at CNCF need is more collaborators. So I do think that this will still be a community driven thing. As you said, the business model is sometimes coming after that community fervor and that, that, uh, that proof of market fit essentially through that initial community adoption in the open source community. I don't think that's going anywhere. One of the things that I think we're really going to see, and particularly at this incredible juncture when the hype and excitement could not be higher, particularly around AI, like we were talking about, it's the new internet, it's a, it's a wild statement to say, but that came up on the show today. And I think what we're going to see here is exactly some of the conversations we've had. A lot more collaboration between very large players in the game and some super smart strategic yeah. little guys yeah. that can help them, that can not only keep building without worrying about funding in the same way because they've got a big partner, but also <laughs> be able to drive those solutions forward at an enterprise level that I think is going to be really interesting. We had a one segment just, to, just on that point. Devs and ops going to lunch together and dinner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which shows the collaboration synergy. No, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it sounds yeah. little, but I think we're going to have a lot more. It, this, and the thing that's going to have to stay, actually I am just going to put my, my stake in the ground on this one. We cannot have the same people creating our AI future that have created our technology past. It's not diverse enough. We don't have enough safeguards in place. And we talk about the ethics of AI and whatnot, but it's beyond ethics. You, you don't know what you don't know. You don't even, you're not even aware of your biases unless you have the right diversity of thought in the room and the right diversity of thought Amen. helping train these models. So that has to be what changes moving forward. I think that will change. I think that's going to, and going to, democratization is going to make that happen. That's the new way. Dustin, what's your take, new old? What's days? You know, I, I would draw the analogy, of course, the, it, it's probably even uh, trite at this point, but to compare the old racking and stacking to just, you know, uh, allocating uh, compute resources in the cloud to dividing up those compute resources into tinier slices and segments, that's all old way and new way. 
you know, and those things used to be hard and they're not anymore. Uh, With the DJ right behind us yeah, here. Yeah, that's not distracting <laughs> at all. That's good swag right we there. We mentioned that KubeCon's always a really good time, and we're not kidding. How often do you see a portable DJ? I believe that actually blows bubbles, Noah was telling me, but he's, he's just cruising around. We had Ford. This is a mobility DJ, y'all. I bet that thing is powered by Kubernetes. What do you think? Do you Absolutely. think there's some sort of abstraction? <laughs> it, it just it disrupted just Dustin's amazing comment. Go ahead. I had to, Well, good. I hadn't got to Dustin, it yet. Go ahead. So, uh, the old and the new. Right now, it's really hard to extract insights from data. It's possible. You can allocate, you can you know, run your models and then train those models and then derive insights, uh, but that's, there's a lot of work to do that. I think, the, I think what gets easier over time is extracting insights from data, and that becomes almost as, it's hard to imagine, but almost becomes as second nature as you know, allocating a, a, a workload to a machine or, or to a VM or to a container is today. Rob. New old. Yeah, I mean, I think it's when you see where things are going, I mean, we've had so many people on today, I think it's the fact that people are leaning into Kubernetes and microservices. It's, it is the future. I think how applications, like, you know, we had American Airlines on like we were talking yeah. about, we had Ford on. These are not companies that go lightly into these new technologies and I think what's going by the wayside That's is the point. traditional development models are finally dying out yeah. and I think Kubernetes is going everywhere. I mean, hell, it's on the mainframe in some cases. Awesome. Well, my take would be, just to kind of wrap up, is say yeah. what, what old, the old, old, the old stuff that's working stays and goes into the new. The data that wasn't used goes into the new and becomes useful. Everything else gets thrown away, and the new thing was culture, creative, community, and the talent and the diversity comes in. I think you're going to see new business models, new apps, everything gets refactored, because if you look at what you're saying about the data, every application gets refactored. Yep. But you, gotta, you can keep what you want. What you want. Yeah. And put a wrapper around it, put a container around it. Pun intended. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, you know? <laughs> So, uh, super exciting. It. Yeah, it, it is really exciting. I am very excited to see what the rest of the show has to hold. I'm sorry we won't have you, no. Rob, but thank you so much for your insights this it was, week. It was fun today. It was good. Good. I'm, I'm glad I got a, a swag segment in and you know got <laughs> got to you know see the giraffe, even though it looks like Pokemon. But whatever. Yeah. You know, I, don't I know. Tell them that. I know. Don't I know. Tell them I know. That. I know. I, I'm yeah. sorry you won't be here for the space beavers and the socks <laughs> tomorrow, but we'll we'll yes. miss you. We'll have to see you in Paris. I'm glad the feet are not my thing. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, that, that's like not my uh, my my cup of tea, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rob, you tell us whatever you want yeah. to tell us, bro. Uh, uh, we'll check know. that browser history, well, but well, uh, well, hopefully yeah. <laughs> 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 and I look forward to another exhilarating day with Let's you. Let's do it. John Furrier, so it's always a pleasure. Always. Thank yes. you for letting me uh, be a little ratchet out here all the time. And thank you all for tuning in to day one's coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con here at CNCF's largest North American event. We love being here. My name is Savannah Peterson. You are watching theCUBE, the leading source for technology news. Yes.